Welcome to the special town meeting for the town of Morristown. If you are a Morristown resident that is not registered to vote, see a poll worker outside the auditorium to register. Seated to my left on the dais are select board members Judy Bickford, Don McDowell, Christopher Palermo, Laura Streets, and Travis Sabasto. Sabatso. Sabat. Right, yeah, Sabatasso, <laughs> sorry. Um, also on the stage behind me is the town clerk, Sarah Haskins, and seated in the audience is the town administrator, Eric Dodge. I would ask, as I will do right now, for people to put their phones, either shut them off or put them in airplane mode. Could we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Troop 876 of Morrisville? To the flag, the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty for justice for all. Please remain standing for the national <laughs> for the national anthem which will be sung by Morgan Reed Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets were clear, the bombs burst in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled pamphlet wave for the Thank you, Morgan. Okay, people can sit now, yep. Uh, by the way, um, my name is uh, Shap Smith, um, and I am the elected moderator. I apologize for not wearing a tie. I actually thought that I had brought one with me from the office, and I don't have it, um, so I get demerit points for that. I apologize. Um, the People's Academy Student Council is providing a bake sale in the hallway to support the ninth grade class. So if uh, anybody uh, is hungry, uh, their dinner is uh, being served. Um, on and it's right outside here. On behalf of the town of Morristown, we want to thank the staff at People's Academy for their assistance in this special election especially Michelle Walker for her coordination, Peter Guillen and Green Mountain Access for their support with the audio visual for the meeting. I also want to thank members of the town clerk's office and the Board of Civil Authority for their work. If you didn't notice, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed to GMA TV YouTube channel, uh, apparently very popular. Anyone, anyone, anyone wishing to speak most, must come forward to the microphone in the center aisle of the PA auditorium and state their full name before addressing the assembly. If you cannot get to the center aisle, a portable mo microphone can be brought to you. Also, if you are um, either making a motion or seconding the motion, 
would you please actually state your name when you do that so that we can have an accurate record and so that Sarah can um, take down your name. Okay, I will bring the assembly to order and I proclaim that the special town meeting of the town of Morristown is declared open at 6.19 p.m. So here are some of the rules of the game. To vote on articles, you must be a registered Morristown voter. If you've not done so already, please pass through the checklist in the outside hallway and receive a colored voting ballot that you will show during a voice vote from the floor or deposit in the ballot box if a paper ballot vote is called. If a paper vote ballot vote is requested, you will be called upon by rows to vote and then given further instructions at the time on the procedure. This meeting is governed by Robert's Rules of Order. They are the basic rules of order for the meeting except where Vermont law takes precedence. The body cannot change Vermont state law, but you can change Robert's Rules with a two-third vote if you desire. An article must be moved and seconded by the body, then restated by the moderator before it is under consideration and debate on the article may begin. After the moderator restates the motion, the person who made the motion has the right to speak first in the debate. Articles may have only one amendment at a time associated with them, and amendments to an article likewise may have only one amendment at a time associated with them. After you've spoken once on a particular article, you will not be recognized a second time during discussion on that article or amendment until all other voters who wish to speak on the issue for the first time are given an opportunity to do so. Robert's Rules only allows a given speaker to speak twice on a given motion and limits the duration of speeches to 10 minutes. Division of the House. A division of the House can be requested by one voter before or after a voice vote. Vermont state law provides for a paper ballot vote on the request of seven voters, unless the town has made other arrangements again before or after a voice vote or after division of the House. All motions, remarks, and discussion, including moving the previous question, must be addressed to the moderator. This is very important. I know that the issues that we're going to discuss bring with them a certain amount of passion. To have a civilized debate, the debate should flow through the moderator, not be directed to um, any particular individual. It makes it so that it's a less personalized debate. Anyone wishing to speak must come forward to the microphone in the center aisle and state his or her, her full name and speak into the microphone so that comments may be heard by the entire assembly. If you cannot get in this, to the center aisle, a portable microphone can be brought to you. Your speeches must be confined to the merits of the question. You will not be allowed to engage in personal attacks on a member of the body or their motives. Vermont state law prohibits consideration of articles that have not been warned. This means you can't amend warned articles such that they would deal with business that hasn't been warned. Reconsideration of an article is allowed by Vermont state law until a point is reached where the body has been working on another article. This means that if you have voted down an article, a motion can be made to reopen consideration of this article by a person on the prevailing side. So, for example, if you voted no on a particular article and that article was defeated and you decided that you wanted to reconsider it, you would be able to do so because you voted no. But if you had voted yes, you would not be able to vote to reconsider. 
However, once the next article is on the floor, no more action can be taken regarding the previous article at this meeting. My role as moderator is to help you accomplish the business you intend to do. Please ask questions if you don't understand what is happening or if you think what is happening is wrong for some reason or if you want to do something but you don't know how to proceed. Please tell me if you feel I am ruling improperly. You have the right to challenge the moderator's ruling. Only registered voters of the town may vote, as we discussed before. Non-residents and unregistered voters may be allowed to speak with the approval of two-thirds of the assembly. During a voice vote, please remain silent. Additionally, you may not raise your hands. Um, I think what is meant to be said is during a voice vote, please remain silent except if you are voting, right? All right. Um, additionally, you may not raise your hands or stand if a physical count is required. We appreciate your cooperation. So copies of the published warning are available at the check-in tables. Um, are there any errors or corrections to be noted in the published unofficial warning? Anybody notice any errors or corrections? Seeing none, um, unless there is an objection, I will waive the reading of the entire articles. Is there any objection to that? So um, I had written this at the top of my uh, notes, but I forgot to mention it. So uh, the fire marshal would like us to let you know where the exits are. Emergency exits here and here. They're at the back. And then in the balcony, there uh, are exits where the exit signs are um, in the back of the balcony. And for those who are in the cafeteria, uh, please look for the exit signs. Okay. We will now proceed to act on Article 1. Do I have a motion? Let me uh, step back for a second. Um, motions have to be in the positive um, for consideration. So um, the motions will be to adopt a particular article. That doesn't mean that you have to vote for it, but to have it considered, it has to be moved in the positive. And at that point in time, you can vote yes or no. All right. So Article 1, shall the voters authorize the construction of sidewalks on Jersey Heights? Any remaining balance should be used for sidewalk operating expenses in an amount not to exceed $200,000 to be financed over a period not to exceed five years. Do I have a motion to adopt Article 1? Okay. There's been, please see it. Okay. Is, is there a second? Second, Rich Jacobs. Okay. So there's been a motion and a second to adopt Article 1. Is there a debate? Todd? Yes, yes. Yep. Uh, very briefly, my name is Todd Thomas. I'm your zoning administrator and planner, town resident. I have handouts for anyone who wants that show plans for the sidewalk and also the budget for the sidewalk. And I can answer some quick questions, and get some factual information about the proposed sidewalk. The sidewalk, for those who don't know, goes from what was A Street, B Street, which is now Feline Loop at the bottom of the hill from the police station, uh, the whole sidewalk goes out to the connection uh, to the pedestrian underpass to Bishop Marshall under the truck route where, that in, where the light is at the intersection. The sidewalk the funds we're talking about tonight, contrary to what you heard on Front Porch Forum and elsewhere, is not for developers. It's for three single family homes and a village property. So there are four segments of sidewalk that this funding would go towards. It goes towards a new segment of sidewalk in front of the village pump station, which is at the very bottom of the hill, next to Feline Loop, which was the old A Street, B Street. 
And the sidewalk continues there past Mike Alexander's house, which is the greenhouse that generally, for some reason, Mike has a ladder on it a lot. I think he works in his house a lot. Then the sidewalk goes up the hill past Bob Henu's house, which is the three-story yellow house. And then their last segment that the sidewalk money looks to fund is in front of Jason MacArthur's house, which is across the street a little bit further up at the intersection of Jersey Heights and Jersey Way, which is the blue house, uh, the single-story blue house there. So again, this sidewalk looks to put sidewalk, the sidewalk article looks to put sidewalk in front of the village pump station where no one else is gonna build it, and then three single-family homes. And that, those segments, the segment from the bottom of the pump station up past Bob Henu's house connects to existing developer-built sidewalks, and then Jason MacArthur is the only missing connection of developer-built sidewalks that'll be built this summer. So if everything goes to plan, and this is funded, which it may or may not be, you'll have a seamless sidewalk, maybe as early as this fall, from the village out to the Bishop Marshall pedestrian underpass. And if it's okay, Shap, I'll just pass those documents out and let people take them if they want. Sure. And happy to answer any questions later, but this is my one time speaking, I think. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments? Rachel? Uh, I think you can use either one. No, that one. The shorter one. No, the other one, I think, because oh, that's... The taller one. The yeah. taller one. My name is Rachel Duffy, and I have a somewhat of a historical question related to this sidewalk. Is Several years ago, the sidewalk on Park Street, I understand, was in bad repair and torn up. And my understanding, there were some residents who very much wanted that sidewalk rebuilt. So I don't, I, if you could clarify the priorities, why this new sidewalk and why the other one did not get rebuilt when there were families with great concern there. Thank you. I'll take, I'll take some of that. I'll answer the best I can, Rachel. The sidewalk on Park Street, we were going to be doing a sidewalk survey. It was in the, the budget that was defeated. Um, that decision was made earlier this year to do a complete survey of all, all the sidewalks in the community. The sidewalk on Jersey Heights has been in process, and I'd like someone else to speak to this because I don't have all these details. Very quickly, this sidewalk on Jersey Heights started under Senator Jeffers. Senator Jeffers was before Bernie Sanders was a senator. This is the last effort to get this project across the finish line. So this sidewalk uh, has been in the works, partly constructed for about 20 years now, long before the sidewalk on Park Street was taken up by the road crew. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, I've got somebody coming up and then you can be next. Okay, so I'm Pat Michelson. I live Can you on Park um, speak into the microphone? Okay. Thanks. I'm Pat Michelson. I live on Park Street. My question is, why aren't you going after grants? There is a lot of money for sidewalks, safe sidewalks. At the end of Park Street, there's a special needs school. I gave the select, we're not attacking anybody, um, information for getting grants. And so that's my question. Why aren't you going after grants? I'm, I'm not in a, in a position right now to answer that question, but right now we're here to talk about Article 1, not about other sidewalks in the community. Well, my point so my we are, it, it is true that we are here to talk about um, the sidewalk on Jersey Heights. I think it's appropriate to ask questions about other alternative sources of funding that have been explored for funding the sidewalk. Okay. This is the Jersey Heights one. So that's my question. Yeah. Have you explored, I'll rephrase it, have you explored grant money from the state? Yeah. So yeah. can someone no. speak to it? All right. Okay. Well, I would suggest that you did. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, can Todd answer that question? Um, sure. Yes, grant money has been explored. If you look at the back of your last sheet in the handout, that's the budget for the project. If we use grant money, 
the, prod, the money part that's in gray comes into play. Grant money generally makes sidewalks more expensive. The sidewalk that was built, the sidewalk was built in two segments really. From east, from the top of the hill by the police station down to the bottom of the hill where it sits now. And we're trying to build from, from the bottom of the hill, the missing segments, out to Bishop Marshall. The top of the hill, we spent more money in our 10% match than what it cost us to build a sidewalk with local dollars using federal money. Federal money is very expensive. Grants are very expensive. There are no free lunches. So this is the most affordable way we can build the sidewalk connections is what's in front of you tonight. Thank you. Hi. I really don't think that it makes sense to make a decision on this before we know whether or not if defeated or withdrawn, it could be placed on the upcoming paper ballot. So I move that consideration be postponed until after consideration of Article 2. So uh, there is a motion to postpone um, consideration of Article 1 until uh, after Article 2. That motion is appropriate. Um, it would require a two-third, uh, let me just, uh, my recollection is that it does actually require a two-thirds of the assembly um, uh, approval. Yes. You, you do have to have a second on it, but I just wanted to, like there is a second. I wanted to clarify that the motion was appropriate. Okay, so um, the motion has been made to postpone consideration of Article 1 um, until after Article 2. Um, that motion is appropriate, and uh, it has been seconded and requires uh, a two-thirds majority vote. And if I may speak to that, I'll just reiterate, I you think. It would be very helpful in deciding how to vote on Article 1 to know what the effect of that would be, whether or not it could be considered on the paper ballot or whether or not it would have to be um, brought back in another in-person meeting next year. So um, I hope that people will vote to postpone consideration. Yeah. Is there any other debate on postponing the order of consideration of the articles? Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. nay. The, uh, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes. Hmm? Oh. Okay. There's been a delay of about 30 years between what my kids hear and what I say. <laughs> yes. I, I, I don't think we can discuss we're in the middle of a vote. Right. And I'm talking about the vote. Well, I don't, I don't no, we, we've actually started the vote. I know. But I don't believe it should be done by voice because some people can yell louder than others. Are you asking for a division? And it should be paper ballot. Paper ballot? Uh, are there seven uh, individuals who would uh, support paper ballot? It will be by paper ballot. Okay, so hold on one second. It's going to, it's going to hold a, can you tell them that it's paper ballot? It's going to be by paper ballot.
So if, if people could just wait, we've got to get ready with um, people standing at the um, voting booth. And uh, we also, as you come up and cast your ballot, you will get another ballot so that when the, if there's another vote by paper ballot, you will have a paper ballot. So you'll exchange one for the other, okay? Excuse me? Okay, to clarify um, for those who um, have a question, the question in front of us is shall consideration of Article 1 be postponed until consideration of Article 2? A yes, a yes means to postpone, a no means that you vote not to postpone. Excuse me? Article 2 is shall the town of Morristown adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680C. Okay. We do not do it on the same ballot. One question at a time. Okay, so what we're gonna do to make this orderly Uh, we're, we're just waiting for everybody to get organized. And I'm going to call by rows. Okay, uh, there is a question. Yes. Excuse me. There is not going to be an Australian ballot tonight on that question. Um, and I, uh, it is not clear. Well, let me just, let me say, if we postpone to consider it, if we vote to uh, postpone consideration until consideration of Article 2, it will be up for vote after consideration of Article 2. I can't say what will happen then. That will be up to the body to determine whether they want to consider it or take some other action. Okay. This is a little complicated because we have people in two rooms, so please humor us. Um, it, it, and because there's a 40 second delay. Um, so what I've been asked to do is to repeat what is being voted on. The question in front of the body is shall consideration of Article 1 be postponed until after consideration of Article 2? That is the question before the body. And to pass, it requires a two-third vote of the body. Are we ready? Okay. 
So if you need a place to write and check your ballot, there are places there to, uh, with pencils to fill out your ballot, um, and the ballot box is right in the stairs up to the, um, to the stage. So I'll call row one. Row one is here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna have the people along the wall go last, just so that you know. Okay. Row two. Row three. Last time I was up here, I so many people. That maybe I can check you guys, Holly? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I don't, I'm, we're voting up both boy, both boy. Row six. Nice job, thank you. Oh no, no. Right, so then we're doing this for nothing. We're just flip flopping one and two. Yeah, right now that's right. Okay. Hi. Row seven. Yes. Um, Peter. Row seven, and please exit to the right when you finish so that people can hand you their ballots. Row seven. Row seven. Row eight. Row 10, oh, excuse me, row 9. Row 11. Row 12. 
So when your roll gets called, can you exit to my right and then filter back or come back through uh, to the left? It'll just make the flow a lot easier, okay? Okay. They're, they're, yeah, that's fine. They're, um, I'm not going to call. Row 12. Good job. Aren't you guys row 11? We were 10, but they miscalled it. They okay. Miscalled it. People understand. Okay. It's a progression. Yeah. We'll figure it out. The next row we'll just get it. Yeah. While we're in the La La Land here, could they open the doors? There's no air moving here. Uh, or is it too loud? But I'll have to ask wow. them for the civil authority. Next row. <laughs> yeah, but somebody has to have blue ones. Shaq. Can I ask Shaq? Bring some blue ones with us. We are bringing a ballot box up to the balcony. So sit tight. Nobody knows. Uh oh, did if I the do you answer? Will I set it up on Amendment 1 afterwards? Or oh, that's it how work? it's currently structured, yes. Uh, why are we voting on Amendment 2 if we're going to vote for Amendment 1 anyway? Okay, I'd like to change this or throw it out. Do I still get a blue card? You can, as long as you drop that in the box. I don't want to. You don't have to vote it. You already have one. Cross it off. Next row, please. I'm good, and you? Yeah, this is your last time meeting day in Morristown. It could be.
Next row, please. Next row, please. People, people in the way back. Anybody who hasn't voted, um, could you please come up and get on the uh, get in line to my right?
Has everyone voted yet? If anybody hasn't voted, you have another two minutes. Yeah, and if you're unable to uh, come to the front, uh, raise your hand and somebody will come and get your ballot. One of the Board of Civil Authority members. <laughs> Voting is closed.
ready? Please listen to the results of your vote. The vote was on the question, shall um, consideration of Article 1 be postponed until uh, consideration of Article 2? Two thirds of the votes necessary to pass. Those voting yes, 231. Those voting no, 142, 62% of the body voted yes, 66 and two thirds percent was necessary for it to pass. The motion fails. So question is before the body is shall article one uh, be approved? Is there, are there questions or debate? Yes. Yeah, can you please come to the microphone? Oh, yeah, we can, we'll bring the microphone to you. We won't be throwing it. <laughs> and, and please remember that we are on a delay for the cafeteria. So when you're finished, I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of, I'm going to give 40 seconds after you're done speaking so that they can digest what you've said. Okay. My name is Jerry Throne. Uh, I read through the handout. And I also saw some of this that was online. This is a much better copy of what I could see from online. Uh, there are several uh, inconsistencies here that maybe you can help me understand. Uh, one is uh, the vote that we're voting on tonight is for a $200,000 budget. Yet on the last sheet, it appears that the total cost, estimated cost, is $307,000. Am I reading this incorrectly? Hold on, Todd. <laughs> well, actually, I think you can answer. It'll be delayed, and then we'll give uh, some time until next. Okay. The actual cost of the sidewalk construction will probably be about 155,000. The, it says 157 here. 200 was asked for. There's one developer property that's come online since that time. The gray you're asking about the difference in the cost, the $307,000, this is what we need to do if we use grant funds. We use state funds or federal funds. All these additional costs come into play. We don't need to spend this money if we use the local dollars instead. So yes, there are grant funds out there, but the project becomes much more expensive when you use grant funds. So things like stormwater time, the traffic control, we can do that in-house locally. We don't need to spend that money using local dollars. So the engineer, this is an engineering cost estimate from Mumley Engineering. He's saying the town can do it for 157, uh, but if we use state funds or federal funds, the project can balloon to $307,000. But we're not using state federal funds, we're just talking about a town appropriation to complete the four missing links of the sidewalk, those four properties. Okay, thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, on the explanation sheet, the second paragraph uh, talks about concrete sidewalks with granite curbs. Now, I know the town requirements uh, state that in residential areas, uh, bituminous sidewalks may be utilized. 
And I think that maybe the granite, or the, uh, rather the, uh, the concrete sidewalks came into play initially because I think you changed the town requirements for sidewalks in the residential area. So I'm just looking to see uh, whether bituminous sidewalks would be objectionable in this area, as there are some existing bituminous areas there now that people use as sidewalks. Also, the idea of the granite curbs, according to the, uh, the town's requirements, a uh, granite curb is, is needed if you, do not, if you cannot provide a two foot, uh, minimum two foot planting strip. I think you have many areas there where you can get a two foot planting strip uh, and uh, eliminate the need for granite curb, which is quite expensive. I do think there were some questions there. Does somebody want to, on the slide board, want to take that? Um, so thank you for that question. Um, I asked that very same question when I first came on this board and we began talking about the um, sidewalk project because obviously pavement, uh, bituminous uh, asphalt is much less expensive. But in that area, according to the sidewalk uh, regulations, and it's pretty extensive, I'm sure you can get a, I didn't bring a copy with me, otherwise I'd give it to you. Um, in that area, it is required that um, the sidewalk to be constructed needs to match the, the uh, sidewalks that, that's there. And in that district, it requires concrete versus bituminous asphalt. So that's why the, the proposal is for, uh, asf uh, excuse me, uh, concrete versus asphalt. I, I, I don't have the answer to the two foot green uh, space and perhaps Todd can speak to that. This sidewalk was scoped by VTrans. Uh, this is what VTrans uh, we came up with in the plan. So this process has gone on for years. This is the finish line. The the selected, the select board selected uh, the town road policy, tied sidewalk policy, excuse me, which was granite curves and concrete sidewalks. It wasn't until the last maybe six months the select board started putting bituminous in their policy. So this project started with concrete and. Uh, granite curbs, and it's always the town's always required that from developers and everyone else until most re till maybe this summer. The select board started putting bituminous in their policy, but per the policy, concrete and granite curbs are required on this road because that's what the developers have built. We're trying to match what's there in kind. Todd, what about the two foot grass strip? That he, he spoke, asked about a two foot grass strip. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, the uh, the question for the two foot grass strip. It was scoped by VTrans. We have an approved sidewalk scoping site from VTrans. It was approved in this form with the, uh, with the curb. It wasn't approved with the grass strip. We have to go back to VTrans, I believe. I'd have to check with that. I can't answer that definitively, but I'm pretty sure I need to go back and reopen up the state scoping process to change it to a grass strip. So that, that would mean a delay if you had to go back and make changes? Yes. All right, thank you. The question has been called. It has been seconded. Hold on one second. The question has been called. So that actually requires a two-thirds vote. My apologies. It's been a little bit. Um, so the question is uh, in front of us. Question has been called. It has been seconded. All those in favor, signify aye. by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The question has been called. Calling the question means that there will be no further debate. And uh, it means that we will go directly to the consideration of Article 1. Okay? 
And I'm also cognizant of the fact that we have the 40 second delay. So, tell them what's happening. 40 seconds from now. <laughs> Question um, has been called and it has been seconded. It's a motion to call the question, requires a two thirds majority for, uh, for it to pass. And what it means is if it's successful, the debate will stop on Article 1. Everybody understand that? Okay. Questions? Um, we are, because of the delay, apologize. This, this is more complicated than I'm used to, because uh, I'm used to the gym. Um, so all those in favor of calling the question, please say aye. Aye. All the opposed, nay. nay. <laughs> we definitely have two thirds here. <laughs> so I will wait to hear from the walkie talkie. Yes. How do we determine that there is two thirds if we are not part of the forty second delay? Like how do we know that there's continuity between the two of us? Donnie Blake. All right, so the question has been called. We will now uh, vote on Article 1. Let me repeat what Article 1 is. Reads, shall the voters authorize the construction of sidewalks on Jersey Heights? Any remaining <clears throat> balance should be used for sidewalk operating expenses in an amount not to exceed $200,000 to be financed over a period not to exceed five years. Yes is approval of Article 1. No is a vote uh, to defeat Article 1. All those in favor of Article 1, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. In this room, the nays appear to have it. We'll wait.
So the question is, um, shall Article 1 pass? And the nays appear to have it. So Article 1 fails. Article 2. <laughs> question is, shall the town of Morristown adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680 subsection C? Do I have a motion? Uh, could you identify yourself? Jamie okay. Garrett. There's been a motion to approve Article 2. Is there a second? Second, James Brewster. Article 2 has been moved and seconded. Is there a debate? Yeah, I mean, before um, we do that, it would be nice to give the 40 second delay people an option. Questions in the cafeteria? Can you let me know if the cafeteria has questions? This is how democracy was designed. Do they have any questions? So there's no debate. Um, you ready for the question? The question is, shall Article 2, which reads, shall the town of Morristown adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 BSA, section 2680C, pass? You ready for that question? So all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Okay. We do have to wait. Find out whether. 
Okay, Article 2 passes. Article 3. Um, shall the town of Morristown elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680B? Do I have a motion? Second? Okay. Any debate? I'm going to just call the vote. I'm just going to do the vote. Okay. No, nobody's voting yet. Yeah, so I'm going to. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to call the vote. I'm just going to call the vote. Okay, all those in favor of our adopting Article 3, which is shall the town of Morristown elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 BSA 26 8. Zero B, uh, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. And I, I actually spoke into the mic. Article 3 has been adopted. Um, Article 4, shall the town of Morristown vote on all public questions by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA, section 2680D. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. Susan Sinnott. Excuse me? Susan Sinnott. One of my name. Okay, yep, Susan, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, is there a second? Yes. Okay. Is there any debate?
I'm going to just rip what it through here. Been moved and seconded. All right, so the question is, shall Article 4, which reads, shall the town of Morristown vote on all public questions by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA, Section 2680D, pass? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes in this room have it. Give us 40 seconds. Article 4 passes. Um, this concludes the warned articles. There being no further business to come before the special meeting of Town of Morristown, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. But so moved. Seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, I appear to have it.